My old buddy David, good to I see know. you. Yep. I know, good to see you too. <laughs> this is like number three. I love yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> I made sure to to shave my, you know, to cut extra oh, clean because yeah. I knew. If you just come over, I'll shave it for you next time. Yeah. So, it, hey, you know what? Shave my head. Put me as an extra. I'll get shot or whatever. It'll be perfect. Yep. Yep. <laughs> awesome. <laughs>
Uh, I also really loved, uh, I'm like, let me make sure the names right, Marianne Rendon as uh, Lola. I thought she was really fun and a nice kind of foil to uh, Jackie Powers. Like the, the the two of them together had a nice kind of like push and pull. So how, how did you find her? Did you work with her before? Or was, um, I guess, yeah, how, how did she come into this film? Yeah, Miss Rendon uh, is, uh, is she's worked with Jeremy before on Charlie Says. And um, I was unfamiliar with her other than that movie um until jeremy brought her up and then i watched a movie where she played patty smith and uh she you know was ta super talented um very smart and uh you know she and scott got on the phone and kind of did a little chemistry you know uh chat and talk through and seemed to hit it off so it 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 all just kind of fell in from there but i'm um, really proud of you know how she uh how she portrayed Lola, and I think you know it. it the movie's all the better for it, so I'm I'm glad uh, Miss Rendon's uh, a part of the ensemble. Yeah, definitely. I liked how she kind of you know grounded some of the scenes. She was a little bit more uh, realistic. Also, she had a lot of bite in her, which I liked. It was kind of nice at the very start when there's a scene where you some other script, some other actor might have played it a little bit more scared, but she was just very like aggressive and very kind of in uh, Jackie Powers' face, which was a lot of fun to see. Yeah, yeah. Marianne's got a you know some fightner and yeah. uh it was nice it was it was important to me and to scott and to the script that that you know whoever played lola did she couldn't be you know a doormat she needed to uh stand up for herself and, and be kind of you know one of the feistier people in the entire piece so um i think she did a great job for sure and uh you know one thing i really noticed is right at the start it kind of starts with this great musical number and then throughout the music is fantastic uh you know how did you but who did the music? Because I, I loved how it also kind of contributed to the lighter tone, the the comedic aspects. It kind of helped to brighten the mood, even when some of the scenes might, you know, could go one way or the other. The music helped to make sure you were like, okay, so this is still still a comedy and and part uh, thriller. Yeah, David Sardi, um, who done you know quite a few films with at this point, was the composer, and he's like a multi Grammy winning producer. I mean, he's done a uh, LCD Sound System, Modest Mouse, The Who, Red Hot Chili Peppers, A Jet. I mean, he's he's very well accomplished. He did the Wolf Mother record that's, you know, wow. super famous. Um, so, you know, he and I had a lot of discussions about the music. And and for me, like you said, like you said, this movie kind of lives or dies with that. Um, you know, the, the music really lets you know that, like, you're allowed to have fun on this movie and you're allowed to laugh where maybe you aren't sure if you should. Um, it gives you permission to do so. So I'm I'm super proud of of Dave and the work he did and uh, the guy's a genius and I think you know in a lot of ways he kind of saved the movie and and made it into what it is so I'm super grateful for that. Yeah, I'm trying to think like that opening scene which could be a more gritty scene if you had like some dark brooding music it would have a very different tone than you had this like light kind of upbeat uh, I don't know orchestral I forget what that what that the genre was but I just remember it being like oh this is fun like I'm smiling now as we're about to approach something that could go either way. Right. Yeah. Um, and I know that you uh, film most of your movies in Oklahoma. I assume this was also filmed in Oklahoma. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. That makes sense. You know, film what you know, right? You know where to go. Uh, right. Was the was the movie always set in Oklahoma or did you pull that in when uh, or was it kind of set in, in a random spot and you were able to kind of craft it around that? I know that it was initially scripted for Los Angeles and and kind of like the desert out there um you know i think you know naturally you know scott's from out there so you write what you know um and he wrote it for you know places he was familiar with out in that area and you know it, it obviously you know uh came into jeremy and i's possession and we had to you know work to uh make it fit into what we know and that is oklahoma so it wasn't too uh crazy of a transition from from one place to the other um but you know overall it works and uh i think it you know it looks great and and was a seamless transition so it's really interesting that you say that because i'm from like i assume the area of california that scott is also from because when you were saying that i was thinking like yeah this could probably fit in my hometown it has like a cowboy feel to it there were definitely horses around it has kind of a similar type of vegetation so that, that's awesome that you're able to seamlessly transition it over yeah um, and so at the end of my screener, I don't know if this is actually in the in the film itself, but in my screener, there was like some, looks like maybe a test shot or like an early cut where uh, Jackie is confronting someone and they have a fight in the hotel room. Was that, is that like in the movie or was that something that was just kind of like added on? Like I, I, was, I, I liked seeing it because it was interesting to see like 
an earlier shot versus how it ended up. And I think it ended up much better. I liked the, you know, how the, the, the final fight ended up, but I was wondering what that, uh, what that was. Yeah. So uh, initially uh, Michael Pitt, the actor was cast as playing uh, Dom Lorenzo. Um, and, you know, mid shoot, we had to actually recast and, and bring in George Carroll, who's a dear friend of ours who did a great job, but we had filmed some of Dom's scenes with Jackie. One in particular was the fight. And, uh, you know, we just, it felt like such a shame to not use any of that footage. And, uh, you know, Jeremy and I, uh, we love Michael and, um, you know, it was just kind of a, a nice little, you know, personal touch for us to, to kind of tack that on to the end of the movie. Um, and, you know, confuse the hell out of people or you know, whatever, you know, it's not really for anybody but us. So, uh, you know, a lot of the things in these movies are, are uh, Jeremy and I uh, just inside jokes and that that is no exception. So hey, it's your movie, right? Like you, you do what you want. With it. Right, man. Yep. Yeah. Um, no, I, I like that, though, because when I was saying that, I was like, OK, this is interesting. Is this like a pre shot? And then I think the phone like hits the wall and actually like makes it. In. I was like, oh, that's probably not some sort of test shot. This is like yeah. a real like full yeah. on sequence. So that makes sense. Right. <laughs> awesome. So I know you have a limited time and I have a very busy day. So I'm going to switch to, I call it the lightning round. They're just lightweight questions about the film. We'll see how your experiences map to things in the film. You can feel free not to answer any of them. I will not be offended, but I try to keep them very answerable. Uh, the first question is, when was the last time you had crab legs? Uh, probably a year ago. All right. Fancy, fancy. Uh, what? So the, the crab legs were kind of symbolically a, a last meal of sorts. What would your last meal be? Cheeseburger. It's a, good, a specific cheeseburger or just any cheeseburger? Uh, you know, depends on where I was dying and where I was taking my last meal. But there's about four or five different cheeseburgers I'd have to choose from. Yeah. Just have them all. It's your last meal. Just get, get everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this film, a lot of the plot involves trying to get a lawyer. I assume you have, but have you ever tried, had to get a lawyer for, for some matter? Yeah. Okay. The, the film also starts with uh, Scott Kahn's character in this you know, semi-ridiculous guy. Not as ridiculous as it could have been, but he has this like giant mustache and this cowboy hat. Uh, have you ever worn something like that to like hide your identity or you know to play a prank on someone? Uh, probably. Yeah. Yeah. When I go out at night, I wear things like that, you know. Just to mix it up. Although you have a, you have a good facial hair, so I don't know. A, a, a yeah. mustache might not blend in as well. Right. Uh, the film also has some objects hidden in a pizza box in one scene. Uh, have you ever hidden something in a pizza box or some other uh, food item to try to sneak it in or try to like have it not get noticed? Absolutely. Excellent. Um, when was the last time you rode a horse? Uh, probably a decade or more ago. Yeah, long time ago. You didn't get to, you didn't uh, try it out after JK got on there just to, just to get up on that little horse now? Oh, no. Funny enough, JK never even got on that horse. <laughs> it was, that uh, was, yeah. Oh, that was all movie magic. <laughs> yeah. yep. Man, no, that, that's, that's a shame. But I guess, you know, g glad that someone experiences riding the horse so there were no mishaps. Right. Uh, the film also has a scene where someone spits in some coffee. Have you ever spit in someone's coffee? Yeah, I've done worse than that. <laughs> All right, we will not ask follow-up questions for that. Um, the Have you ever pretended to be married or be a couple with someone for any purpose? In this film, they, they had to pretend to be married for uh, you know, a specific plot purpose, but have you ever had to do something like that? Yes. Okay. And this last question. Uh, it struck me that there were a lot of landlines used in this film, and I have not used a landline in a very long time. When was the last time you used a landline? Um, you know, I have a landline at my house. Oh, one wow. of the few people, yeah, it's an extra ten dollars where I'm from to keep the landline. So yeah, I uh occasionally uh pick up and order a pizza or something from my landline. Yeah. Just to hear that dial tone, right? Like that's something that we kind of miss from uh, like it, man. yeah, or to call like Miss Cleo or one of those one eight, you know, nine hundred numbers or something like that. Best to do it from a landline. Yeah. Exactly. And if there's a disaster, the landline will still get power. So that's uh that's another good thing. That's right. You're prepared. All right, so the, the film is One Day as a Lion. It's coming out in theaters on April 4th, 2023, and digital on demand on April 7th, 2023. You are out promoting it, but I know that you are constantly working. Um, after people see this film and kind of get accustomed with you, what else can they look forward to uh, in the future from, from you and the, you know, your, your group? Um, yeah, they can, uh, they can look forward to, they can go check out Candyland, Little Dixie, Ida Red, Body Brokers, Run with the Hunted. 
if you uh you know are in russia you can probably find a copy of let me make you a martyr on dvd somewhere um other than that we are working on a movie called uh king ivory that will you know be shooting in a few months and uh we'll be sharing with people not too long long after that so that is awesome i love that you're like constantly working and constantly telling stories and yeah just from that that back catalog there are a lot of good films in there that people can go check out after they see one day the lion or one day as a lion actually that is another question that i was going to ask but i forgot to ask uh the title one day as a lion like how did that come in i kind of understand it from the film but i don't think it was ever like specifically said or there was no like specific plot point where they mentioned that so where did that title come from um, that's a Scott Kahn question. Um, it, it, you know, he, he titled the movie and, uh, you know, the, the only reference to it in the dialogue is at the end when Dom says to him, you know, you got the heart of a lion, Jackie, uh, to which I interpret as, you know, um, you know, th this kind of this last day where Jackie saves his kid, he's kind of, you know, he's, he's this perpetual fuck up who finally has this moment, um, where he is great and it comes through and, you know, thus is uh having his one day as a lion exactly and i also thought that it also mapped with uh lola's character too because they both kind of step up in the end and really kind of go out of their shell so i thought that that was a it could have been interpreted both ways but I, I like your explanation i think that fits perfectly uh anyone can go see it and get their own interpretations the film is one day as a lion it comes to theaters on april 4th 2023 and digital on demand on april 7th 2023 this is john swab the director thank you so much for your time Thank you, Dave, and have a great day, man. Awesome. You too. Thank you. That was John Swab, the director of One Day is a Lion, which comes to select theaters on April 4th, 2023, and digital and on demand on April 7th, 2023. It is a thriller that has a nice kind of overall tone, some comedic aspects, and a really satisfying ending. If you liked this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you.